Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. I hope your day is going good. I'm just going to try to make this as short as I can and get right into the video. Do you know what the one thing that you will bring into eternity is? Yes, confidence. And by this love is perfected with us that we may have confidence on the day of judgment that as he is, so we are in this world. So if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, the one thing that you will take into judgment is confidence because love has been perfected with you. Um, the word perfected means that it's at its maximum greatness. Nothing can be added to, to make it better. It's at its pinnacle of what it can be. By this love has been perfected with us that we may have confidence on the day of judgment that as he is, so we are in this world. And in this world, we have the righteousness of Christ. And that is why, we, that is why and the only reason why we will have confidence on the day of Jesus Christ it has nothing to do with ourselves. In fact, Paul said we are the true circumcision who take no confidence in the flesh, but boast in Christ Jesus and worship God in the Spirit. The one thing will be your words, the memories of all the words you spoke here on earth. Jesus said that by... Are you, are you starting to get afraid? Are you starting to be afraid of all the words that you've ever said? Um, you know, that includes the thoughts of your heart because God knows the things that we say in our heart as well. So if you notice that you're being uh, led by fear, then it's time to start recalibrating. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, and God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. It doesn't mean that you won't feel, feel fear rising in your heart or you won't have someone pushing fear. But your job as a believer is to cast out fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And he that fears has not been made perfect in love. So our job as a believer is to cast out fear. Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace. So when you notice that someone is pushing a fearful doctrine that causes you to take confidence in the flesh, then you know that you are um, in the presence of a false teacher. Let's go back a second here and play about what he's going to say here. Jesus said that by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Jesus said, whoever believes in the Son of God is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in the Son of God is condemned already. So. With the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So how come one is ultimately, how is one ultimately not condemned? It is because of the confession made unto salvation, those words by which are caused by the Holy Spirit. Beloved, this one thing I make, want to make known to you, no one speaking of the Spirit of God can say Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So the confession made unto salvation that Jesus Christ is Lord has to do with the work of the Holy Spirit in somebody's heart by which Jesus, God himself, is the author and finisher of our faith. Um, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Paul said, I am confident that he, God, that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus speaking to his disciples, said, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. This is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. And so if you are believing in Jesus Christ, it is because you were born of God, a work of God. Um, he that believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, according to the Bible, it is because you are already current and past tense been born of God. And it's not something of yourself that believing that faith, faith and believing, it doesn't derive from the flesh. Those in the flesh cannot please God. If you could put your faith in the Son of God, the Father would be well pleased in you. If you could do that in the flesh apart from the Spirit. But the Bible says the flesh profits nothing. It's the Spirit that gives life. The words that I have spoken to you are Spirit and they are life. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so it was pleasing to God to save us, so he gave us faith. Um, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. So when Paul was equating grace with faith, he said, By the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think highly of yourselves and you ought, but with sober, sound judgment.
judgment, for God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith. So we are to, to think soberly about ourselves and not highly because God has dealt to us a measure of faith by which we are saved. It's not something we self-generated. If you believe you are self-generating your faith, it can lead to this type of um, thinking where you think very highly of yourself and you get a very legalist mindset and you believe that you're saving yourself. So I just just to establish with the heart one believes unto righteousness, that is believing in Jesus Christ, um, to the one who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So an ungodly person believing on Jesus Christ, his faith is accredited to righteousness, and it's not from them working to the one who does not work. In fact, it says to the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but as wages due. That means you owe something. You have payment to owe, even after all the work. But to the one who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. Good or evil starts in the heart of men, and then it proceeds to be a word, and then an action. Now, I would rather sit next to a sailor in a bar using every expletive in the book than to sit in a church filled with people while a false gospel is being spouted. There's nothing more profane, there's nothing more corrupt, and there's no, nothing more filthy of speech than a false, perverse gospel. So let's keep that in mind. There's going to be a lot of people on the Day of Judgment that are going to be very surprised when they say, well, wait a minute, Lord, uh, did I not keep my tongue from saying the F word? Did I not go to PG-13 movies and then reprimand those who did? And he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. That's ultimately going to be those who appeal to their works and their own righteousness. That is going to be their end, unfortunately. Their end is going to be according to their works, the Bible says. And ultimately, evil actions lead to death. It leads physically to death and then to everlasting spiritual death. Our words will also lead to everlasting life if we find Jesus and endure with him to the end. Now, he always likes to say this, that if we find Jesus and we endure to the end, if we endure to the end, he'll never tell you how we endure to the end. You know, I alluded to that. He that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. May your body, soul, and spirit be preserved complete and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls, and he will also bring it to pass. The Bible says that he will strengthen you and guard your hearts from the evil one. So the reason why we endure to the end is very clear in scriptures. is because we will never be snatched out of his hand that we are loved even as the Son is loved, that we have a perfect unity with Christ, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. But yet he'll never tell you these things. He'll just say, endure to the end. Why? Because he wants you to take confidence in the flesh and get those who are not very sharp at the word of God to start to stumble. See, that's why I say there's nothing more profane than the things that he says. Luckily, that the hand of the Lord is not shortened that it cannot save. That he actually uses these false people to actually buffet his children, not to destroy them. Jesus fills his children with everlasting life. And now see, he believes you can lose your salvation and that you have to endure to the end before you know you have everlasting life. So he can never say that he fills his children with everlasting life. He can only say that he fills his children with temporary life, that they have temporary life until they blow it, and then all of a sudden they have to work or do something to get salvation back. So he can never truly say that um, that Jesus fills his children with eternal life. Now, I can truly say that because I believe that when God saves people, he saves them eternally, um, according to Jesus' own words. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. They shall not come into the judgment, but they have passed from death to life. So while we will be at the judgment, we will be there with confidence. We won't, we won't be brought into judgment. That's because Christ has become our life, the scripture says. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, having now been reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? So we're saved by his not life, not our own life. 
and we were reconciled to God while we were yet sinners. See how he twists and distorts the gospel. See how profane this is. It makes children of God stumble, but again, they can't. They will not stumble into death from these false teachers. Now to him who is able to keep you st from stumbling and make you appear blameless. So this is God doing it. He keeps us from stumbling, ultimately, from people like this. He fills us with a spring of living water that bubbles up in us, in our soul, and overflows. And when others hear it, they will also be encouraged and come to everlasting life. It is not... There's nothing I can say to encourage people or make people come to everlasting life. I can give the gospel till I'm blue in the face, but unless God has chosen them for salvation, they will not hear it, they will not see it, and they will not be saved. Uh, for the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others it has not been given. So seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, at least they turn and understand and be forgiven. Paul said, Beloved of God, we know that God chose you because our gospel came not merely with words, but with power, deep conviction, and the Holy Spirit. So Paul knew that he could give the gospel and it would just be mere words unless the Holy Spirit came and brought deep conviction to those that were chosen of God. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but it was God in giving the increase. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. So he knew that ultimately, though he was planting and watering the word of God, he was nothing unless God gave the increase, unless God caused the growth. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. And this is the witness of God that he has testified of his son. And whoever believes that Jesus is the son of God has the witness in themselves. So if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you have the witness of the inner abiding witness of the Holy Spirit in yourself. And that is a greater witness than the witness of men. And that is why you believe. He that believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So you are born of the Spirit of God. He is indwelling you. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And that, that believing is a sign of spiritual life. That is a sign that you are born again. Again, something that is not of yourself, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the reason why we are saved ultimately in physical reality and brought into spiritual birth has to do with God's choice and not our own. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. If you were of the world, the world would love its own, but because I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father, and who the Son chooses to reveal Him. So you see, when you don't, when you have a self-generated, I did it, I I made the choice, it's my faith, I'm self-generating. You have this type of theology where you think that you're enduring to the end under your own power, and you are saving yourself over other people. Because it is our words, but it is because it is the words. Of Jesus Christ in us no matter how rich you are one day you're going to die and your life will be meaningless because you cannot bring even the relationships you built on this earth into the afterlife we will bring the relationship the perfect relationship that we have with Christ into the afterlife we have a perfect unity with Christ that Jesus has told us about he's established a perfect reconciliation a perfect peace with God the Father through his work and it's not on the basis of anything that we could ever do. And we definitely can't do anything to make the work of Christ any better. Um, he will keep you at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. And we are the true circumcision to take no confidence in the flesh. So it's very clear in scripture where our confidence should be and why we should have peace. It's not based on ourself, but based on the love of God that he has demonstrated for us. Um, not just giving an offer out into humanity but that he saved a particular people, that he loved you particularly and died for you particularly. And, and he endured all things in the flesh for you particularly. Even Paul said, all things I do, I do for the sake of the elect. Paul said, for this reason, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus and with it the hope of eternal glory. 
So Paul said, for this reason, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen. He didn't say, I endure all things for the sake of every single person in the world that they may know that God loves them, but he endures all things for the sake of those who are chosen. Even Jesus only endured the shame of the cross and the pain of the cross for those who were chosen. Jesus was clear, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I went over those verses. Um, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. The New Testament, it says, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So Christ loved a particular body of individuals, the church, and gave himself up for her. That's who he loved and that's who he died for. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep, not the goats. You can't bring anything with you except the memories of your words. When you stand before Jesus, will he say, Away If you were, as a believer, bringing the memory of your words, you would be bringing your sins, but your sins have been removed as far as the east is to the west. The Bible says, in him there is no sin. It says that he that is born of God does not sin because his seed remains in him and he cannot sin. So if you are in Jesus Christ, you are in him who is faithful and true, the one and true God and eternal life. And the scripture says, if you are in him by you are in him by God's own doing. It says by his own doing, that is God's, by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became from us from God, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, and wisdom, so that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. So if you are in Christ Jesus by faith, he has become your righteousness. He has become your sanctification. He has become your redemption. He has become your wisdom. It just be, it's coming to the full knowledge of that and believing the words that God has said and the promises that he has made. And God is not a, a man that he should lie about these things. From me, you who commit lawlessness, wickedness, you who commit sin, or will he say, enter if you're into preaching and peddling a false gospel, that's exactly what he's going to say to you. It, now listen up, because I'm going to play it again. If you're preaching a false gospel, this is exactly what you're going to hear on the Day of Judgment. Away from me, you who commit lawlessness, wickedness, you who commit sin. Or will he Why? say, because if, you're, if Christ is not your works, the end will be according to your works. To, to the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but as wages do. But to the one who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. It's a narrow way, and, you're, and it's so narrow that you're not going to be able to squeeze your filthy rag works into, into the kingdom of God. It's, they're not welcomed. Your filthy rag works are not welcomed into the kingdom of God. And it's so narrow that you're not going to get in with them. So uh, the scripture corrects us over and over. It, it tells us you know, that we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law, which means that our object of our faith is in Jesus Christ, and we are justified apart from all those good things that are in the law. The law is good, but it's only good for what it's good for, and it's good to show us that we're scum and that we are in complete and utter need of a Savior. You know, the law was brought in so that the whole world would become guilty before God and that every mouth would be stopped. Paul said the law was brought in that transgression would increase, but where sin and transgression increased, grace abounded all the more in Jesus Christ. So the law wasn't brought in so that righteousness would increase. It was brought in that transgression would increase. Um, the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. So when you bring in the law, it brings in the power of sin. And that's exactly what he's trying to do in, in people's lives, believer or non-believer. So go ahead and wrap this up here. Enter into my presence, you who are my child, who said and did exactly as I told you. Oh, can you make that boast? Have you said and did exactly everything that the Lord has told you? Do you think that he can make that boast? in the midst of his false gospel that he has said and did everything that the Lord has told him to do. No one can make that boast that, that we have done everything that the Lord has said and told us to do. If we did, we wouldn't have our eyes and we wouldn't have our hands because they cause us to sin. 
your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it away from you. For it would be better to enter in a, into eternal life lame than to have your whole body cast into hell. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the law. And he was saying those things to bury people under their own self-righteousness. That if you were going to attempt to actually do the works of the law to save yourself, Jesus brought it to its absolute absurd of impossibility for that to happen. That those in the flesh, it is impossible for those in the flesh to please God. That they cannot please God. Those in the flesh cannot please God. And it's impossible for men to enter into the kingdom of God through their own efforts and through their own works. So I'm just going to wrap it up. The video is pretty much done. I think he just says, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, which he'll never go into what grace actually means. May the grace yeah, of Jesus be with you. Okay, guys. God bless. Peace to you. Take care. Hope your day your night's going good.